Hello everyone. You may be wondering how come that I have been practicing meditation for quite some time, but I don't get the result as I expect. In other words, you may be feeling that you make a very slow progress in your meditation practice, and you're wondering why and how. Is there anything you can do about it? So today, I am going to share with you the six common characteristic of a good meditator mentioned by the Buddha himself. Understand this characteristic will help us to reflect back to our own practice. And if you can adjust according to this characteristic, then it may help you to improve your meditation practice. So let's hang out with our great teacher, the Buddha. And number one characteristic of all good meditators, they all have faith. They have faith toward their teacher. They have faith toward the teaching, and they have faith toward the technique that they practice. There are so many meditation practices that are available out there. Faith is the first starting point for us to be success in anything, whether in business, in study, including in meditation. We must develop initial faith toward the teacher, toward his teaching, and toward the technique that we practice. Since there are so many meditation techniques that are available, according to the Buddhist text, there are more than 40 techniques mentioned in the text. How do we know which technique is right for us? And that's something you need to explore. You need to give yourself some time to explore which technique that works for you, or which one that fits your personalities. And once you find the technique that works best for you, then you develop faith toward that technique. You need to fully understand of how to practice according to that technique. For example, if you use the breathing meditation, you need to understand how many steps of practicing this technique. You need to understand how to do this correctly. Breathe in short, breathe out short, breathe in long. Is there anything else that you need to understand and adjust according to this breathing meditation technique? Make sure you fully understood the technique that you use and make sure that you increase faith toward your teacher and toward the teaching and the technique that you use. And this is the starting point of all great meditators. They have faith toward their teacher. They also have faith toward the technique that they use. And the second characteristic is called health. What is health has to do anything with meditation. Even though meditation is a mind development, but the mind stays in the body. In order for the mind to be able to stay still, to remain calm, and continuously to remain at peace during meditation, we need to make sure that this body is fully comfortable, is fully relaxed, is refreshed, and is energetic. So it is important for all of us to make sure that we maintain a good health in order to have a good meditation result in the long run. From my own experience, I would like to say, if you love meditation, you must love exercise. We need to make sure that we exercise regularly. You can find any exercise that you feel comfortable to fit your time schedule during the day. Can be walking, can be going to the gym, can be swimming, can be, can be anything. Just to make sure that your body is relaxed and your body is refreshed. Not only exercising, you must make sure that you are moderate in eating. I don't know if you noticed that if you have a heavy meal, for example, at lunch or in the evening, and then you would go to meditate after that, you're going to have a very hard time trying to steal your mind because you tend to fall asleep. Why? Because there are some food in our stomach, and the body is digesting the food while we're trying to steal our mind. The Buddha suggests the monk to be moderate in eating, to mindful of what you eat. You know how much the body needs the food, you know what to eat, you know when to eat, and you know how to eat it. Some monks eat late meals because it helps him to maintain good health and it helps the body to digest much better if he eats more vegetable over the meat. So it's about getting to know yourself physically and mentally. According to the monk's activity, monk usually go to bed around 10 p.m. and then we usually wake up around 4.30, which gives us about six hours of sleeping time and then we will wake up very fresh, the body has fully rest, the mind has nothing in the mind, and right away we can go meditate. So three of these, exercise regularly, moderate in eating, and have enough rest. So these three things will help us to maintain a good health in the long run. And that's of course, it will affect our meditation practice. The third characteristic of all good meditators is about observing precepts. Back to the Buddha time, the Buddha not just right away teach someone how to meditate. Usually he would start off 
with letting them understand the concept of precept and teach them how to observe precept first. You may be wondering why. During meditation, all meditators, we normally face something called the five hindrances. These five hindrances hinder the mind from going deeper to the meditation practice, something that's stopping us, something that worries us from going deeper into our meditation experience. And those five hindrances are sense pleasure, the mind go after something that it desire, you will, the mind get agitated with something that it doesn't like, and sleepiness, the mind falling asleep. And number four is about restlessness or worry because too many things going on in the mind. And the last one is doubt. These five things are considered the enemy of meditator. When we meditate, we may be encountering one of these or a couple of these during the meditation practice. And the question is, what gives rise to these five hindrances? That's very interesting. The Buddha points to the wrong misconduct usually give rise to the five hindrances because it gives worry to the mind. And that is why the Buddha would introduce those people or his students to understand the concept of precept and make sure that they observe precept first, prepare themselves before he teaches them how to train their mind through the meditation practice. And when we talk about precept, it may be broad, it's difficult to practice. So the Buddha introduced for the lay people something called the five precepts so we can put into practice right away. Number one is refraining from harming oneself and others. And number two, refraining from stealing, taking someone belonging. And number three, refraining from sexual misconduct. And number four, refraining from false speech, telling a lie, telling bad word, telling divisive speech, or telling harsh speech. Number five is about refraining from intoxicate yourself which crowded your mind from alcohol or from drug. So if you're looking for peace of mind when you meditate, I would suggest you to start observe precept. Every time your mind have a lot of things to be worried. And if you have been meditating for quite some time and you notice that no matter how hard you try, your mind still have something to worry about all the time. Maybe it's time for you to check your own behavior, your own action about the precept. If you keep on breaking these five precepts, the five hindrances will always be there for you every time you close your eye and try to meditate. Now we come to number four of the characteristic of a good meditator, and that is called sense control. Sense control is very crucial. If we know how to guard our sense door well, it helps us to remain calm in all situations. When we're talking about sense door, I like you to think of the sixth door of sense. Start from eyes, see the form, ear, hear the sound, nose can smell the odor, the tongue can feel the taste, and the body can feel the physical contact. And the last one is the mind, because the mind can think, thinking of the past, thinking of now, and thinking of the future. So these are the sense door that allowing us to communicate with the outside world. If we don't guard our sense door well, we would allow the enemy, allow the craving to come to the eye and go to the mind, to come to the ear and go to the mind. When we see something we like, the mind tends to go after that thing. When the mind sees something it doesn't like, it tries to run away from that thing. So basically, it, it, the mind gets excited about what it sees, what it hears, what it smells, what it tastes, what it touches all the time. And that is why if we don't guard our sense door well, when it's time for meditation, the mind is still staying outside. It doesn't like to come back and stay still in the body because it it's always go after something that it feels excited about it. A good meditator, they usually guard their sense door very well. When they see something, they just remind themselves that seeing is just seeing, hearing is just hearing, tasting is just tasting. So they do their best to prevent the craving from happening after seeing something, after hearing something, after tasting something. And that helps the mind to remain calm and stay still inside the body all the time. The Buddha mentioned clearly, if someone knows how to guard their sense door well, and that will help that person to lessen suffering in their daily life. But for some people who don't guard their sense door well, they open up all the door for the enemy to come and attack them, and that will give them a hard time when they go back to meditate. And number five is about self-discipline, it's about persevere. The text in the Buddhist text use the words practice wakefulness. That means good meditator, they cannot be lazy. If you want to be successful in anything, I believe laziness should be one thing on top of your list that you must make sure that you remove it out of your way. Good meditator, they always have self-discipline, they always stick with their plan. When it's time to go meditate, they go meditate. 
if they plan to sit one hour, they would be there one hour no matter what happens. So people who sacrifice the most will deserve the most, right? And if you are serious about your own practice and you hope to get the good result, you must develop self-discipline. And another meaning of self-discipline, which I learned from my master, he said, whether you like it or not, you do it anyway. Whether you like to wake up early or not, if you know this is good for your meditation practice, you would get up right away and go to meditate. It doesn't matter how hot, how cold, whether you feel good or you don't feel good. You're going to have to get up and go back to meditate anyway. And it is said that in order for someone to qualify to be a good pilot, after you obtain the pilot license, you need to have at least 1,000 to 1,500 hours of flying time to gain experience. Then you can qualify to be a good pilot. You see? Same thing in meditation. You need to give yourself time, stick with the journey long enough. Just keep on sitting, adjust and sit, adjust and sit. You're just gonna have to stick with your schedule and keep on meditating no matter what happens. And eventually your mind will be obedient and will come back and stay still as you expect. And the last characteristic of a good meditator is mindfulness and awareness. Every single good meditator, they always be a mindful person because mindfulness is an essential factor for anyone who wants to be success in meditation practice. What it means by mindfulness? Mindfulness is about being at the present moment fully. If you eat, you eat. You don't check email, you don't read newspaper, you don't watch the television. You focus on the food in front of you. You know what kind of food you're about to take and when you put the food into your mouth, you know that you're about to chew the food, how many times you want to chew the food, and when you want to swallow that food. So in this process, actually two things happening. Number one, you are mindful about eating. And number two, you are aware of what you are eating. So there are two things, it's happening simultaneously. So you develop mindfulness and then you develop awareness. These two things support each other. When we are mindful, we know where our mind is. And this is a good question to ask yourself throughout the day. Where is your mind? Because when you ask this question, where is my mind, it helps you to stop and reflect exactly where is your mind. When you know where is your mind, then you can welcome your mind back to the body. And this helps us to keep the mind stay in the body all day long. Because in the reality, we only have time to sit 30 minutes or 40 minutes a day when you come back home before you go to bed or when you wake up early in the morning. But during the day, we have to go to work, we have to go to school, we have to live with people, we have to talk to people, we have to make a lot of decisions. And during the day, if you're not mindful of what you do, if you don't always keep bringing your mind back to the center, when it's time for you to go back to the question and try to meditate, it's going to be very challenging for the mind to be still. So reflect on this information that you learned today about these six characteristics of a good meditator. Start from having faith toward your teacher, toward the technique that you use, and develop and make sure you maintain good health, have enough food in your body, have enough rest, and exercise regularly. And number three, make sure you observe precept. Make sure you not be a harmful person. And this helps to lessen five hindrances when we meditate. And number four is about guarding your sense door. Be careful of what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you touch. And number five is about practice wakefulness or not being lazy, have self-discipline, stick with your schedule, keep on sitting no matter what happens. And number six, the last one, is about develop mindfulness and awareness during the day. By understanding these characteristics and apply them into your own practice, I believe it would help you to meditate much better from now on. So wish everyone success in your meditation practice, whatever technique that you are practicing. Namo Buddhaya.